Welcome uh, once again. Uh, let me get into the course called the topology and condensed matter physics. And uh, this is uh, Saurabh Basu who would be teaching this course. I am from Department of Physics, IIT Guwahati. My email address is here. So, I start with conjecture by Poincare uh, in made in 1908 and in fact, he is the uh, sort of uh, person who initiated the study of topology in different branches of physics and uh, he made uh, this uh, statement is uh, somewhat strange. However, it is there is a conjecture which was uh, later on solved and uh, this conjecture said that uh, the point set topology is a disease from which the human race will soon recover. We will not uh, get into what he exactly wanted to uh, mean by this. But there are far reaching uh, consequences of uh, this topology in uh, various branches of physics, which is what we shall elaborate here. So, it is uh, known for a reasonably long time that uh, topology may have uh, significant bearing on uh, classifying systems. And uh, the way it occurs is that uh, we know that there are systems which have. Um, these uh, singularities that appear in the system and uh, these uh, singularities uh, in certain systems they appear as uh, vortices okay, or vortex and uh, these um, uh, vortex is something that uh, it is like a complex number uh, z equal to r exponential i theta. So, when uh, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi uh, these uh, complex number remains unchanged. So, uh, there is uh, sort of the center of this or the origin of this uh, definition of complex number is where a vortex resides. Uh, so, the focus is that uh, whether you know these vortices can be contracted to a point without crossing each other that is without crossing one vortex. And this is a branch of uh, mathematics which now has entered significantly into physics which is called as a homotopy theory and um, it plays a very important role in algebraic topology. All right. So, uh, Poincare st uh, started all these studies and um, so uh, all these things started roughly about uh, the end of the uh, 19th century which is 1890 and so on. And uh, so, while investigating problems in uh, celestial mechanics which is uh, popularly known as classical mechanics uh, in the modern times. Um, so, there are a few things that he noted. One is the a smooth mapping between the surfaces. Uh, second is uh, there are uh, these uh, fixed point theorems and um, then uh, there are the singularities of the vector fields. etcetera there may be a lot more and um, so these are uh, really the uh, the applications of uh, topology in physics and um, <coughs> uh, Poincare uh, so he sort of pointed out that these results of these um, they can be systematically applied to other mechanical systems electromagnetic systems optical systems in particular uh, acoustic systems and so on okay now, uh, is this very new? Is this something that we have never been aware of these applications of topology in physics say for example? And uh, it is not that I mean if you really think about this Gauss's law, let me write that and uh, Ampere's law in standard electromagnetics. Uh, okay. So, this was uh, E dot 
uh, ds is equal to uh, q enclosed by epsilon 0 and it is a closed surface integral and this is the, the surface is a we uh, sort of call it as uh, s and also uh, b dot dl with where b is the magnetic field here is the electric field. So, flux of the electric field and uh, this is like the line integral of the magnetic field is like a uh, mu 0 i enclosed I am sort of for convenience I am taking it to be a uh, vacuum, but then you can write down in matter as well where you to use T and H and so on. Okay. Now, you see that uh, these uh, integrals uh, over these uh, geometric sort of uh, curves. Uh, so, the here there is a surface for the Gauss's law and there is a contour in the in this uh, Ampere's law and uh, these uh, the fluxes and the line integral of the magnetic field gives you a constant. So, this is just a constant here and this is a constant here. So, these constants are really the topological invariant which means that uh, uh, we can deform this surface and we still would get the same result. So, uh, they involve the surface integral and line integrals and as I said that uh, so suppose you have a charge here a q and uh, you can have a, a, a surface which is uh, you know uh, surrounding it enclosing it uh, it will be the q by epsilon 0 and uh, I can also deform this surface like this it still would be uh, the same integral or rather the the resultant will be same of the integral and if I still deform in this particular fashion it will still be same. And similarly, the line integral of B say we start with uh, this and this contains a current. Uh, so, I will just show that. Uh, so, this is that uh, it is a current and uh, the magnetic field uh, the line integral of the magnetic field uh, will uh, give you the uh, i enclosed. So, it is mu 0 i and if I now change it to another one, but enclosing this will still be the same and so on. Okay. So, this is the, uh, the first uh, realization of uh, topological invariant or the application of topology in the field of physics. And um, so, if we continuously deform that uh, these things as long as we do not cross that charge which is like a singularity or a vortex um, or we do not cross that uh, current, current carrying wire uh, we are fine in defining these uh, invariants or rather these uh, equations. Okay. And uh, in fact, uh, Lord Kelvin uh, in its model for atoms have actually said that uh, these atoms are uh, knotted uh, vortex uh, lines in ether. So, this is uh, Lord Kelvin's model of atoms. He considered atoms as knotted vortex lines embedded in ether. Ether is just a medium and uh, we have seen this in the context of you know the speed of light which uh, eventually you know Michelson and Morley actually said that there is no medium uh, through which the light travels and uh, that was a famous Michelson and Morley experiment. So, this is something similar to that and um, in particular you know this uh, multiplicity of the atoms which uh, arises because of the number of unpaired electrons and these um, multiplicity is uh, due to the different ways. Uh, that uh, you know the vortex lines can be knotted. Okay. So, uh, multiplicity is related variety of ways that the vortex lines 
can be noted. Which means all these vortex lines can be tied with each other and uh, uh, this is of course, uh, not a, a good uh, description which uh, Lord Rutherford came and um, you know uh, completely modified it and it is actually the model of atom that uh, is taught in uh, uh, undergraduate as well as even in school levels. But however, this was the original idea of Lord Kelvin. So, uh, there have been bits and pieces of uh, these uh, topological implications coming into various fields of physics. Uh, however, it uh, found uh, really its uh, you know foothold uh, in a few areas and uh, uh, these areas are So, one of them is um, Dirac's um, argument or uh, his uh, you know conviction about uh, the magnetic monopole. So, let me write Dirac's magnetic monopole. Uh, this was as early as 1931, uh, then uh, came the Aronoff Bohm effect. This was in 1959 and uh, then it was um, you know one of the main uh, topics of our discussion which is quantum hall effect. Which is 1980. Uh, so, the first one as I said is due to Dirac and then it was uh, Arano van Bohm. Quantum hall effect was due to Klitzing. And soon after that, um, uh, Gossert, Stormer, and Sui they have uh, published the fractional version of it, uh, the fractional uh, quantum Hall effect, as it's known. And uh, then uh, we have uh, these quantum spin Hall effect. This is around 2005. And uh, you know, really, a, a bunch of uh, paradigmatic models. Are tight binding models. Okay. Uh, so, as a material, you know, this uh, monopole is not a material, neither is Aronoff Bohm effect, which are just phenomena. Uh, quantum Hall effect is the first uh, realization that 2D electron gas in presence of a strong magnetic field uh, can uh, be considered as a topological insulator. And this was the first realization of uh, quantum uh, or, or rather topological insulator which was in 1980. Uh, different kind of uh, uh, topological insulator with uh, spin filtered edge modes etcetera they were discovered in 2005 and um, they were uh, they found to have uh, a lot of uh, applications in uh, very interesting phenomena called as uh, spintronics which uh, in principle could replace the electronics. Uh, and um, uh, would be a next generation uh, devices, uh, communication devices and so on. And uh, we will uh, talk about uh, you know 3, 4 uh, and as well 5 uh, where we would talk about a number of models which are uh, very simple models uh, yet they capture the topological properties in a very uh, systematic way. And uh, we can uh, because of these, these are tight binding models. So, uh, they can be written down uh, nicely in case space. So, uh, we can calculate the topological invariant uh, and uh, we can show that when the system sort of makes a transition from a topological phase to a trivial phase or vice versa or from one topological phase to a different topological phase that are characterized by different values of the, uh, the topological invariant. Okay. So, uh, we will uh, talk about uh, these three uh, in details uh, throughout the course. 
However, uh, just to make matters complete, uh, let me uh, discuss these uh, Dirac's uh, magnetic monopole uh, and Aronoff-Bohm effect in uh, very brief so that uh, one gets an idea that uh, uh, which are as you see that chronologically they occurred uh, much before the quantum Hall effect. Uh, and uh, these arguments are very elegant and they are uh, definitely worth seeing in this context. However, we uh, will not sort of deliberate on them uh, too much and we will go on to this uh, actual uh, studies of uh, uh, topology in condensed matter physics. Whereas, these the first two actually correspond to uh, any general physics uh, in, in particular uh, say quantum physics or electrodynamics say for example. Okay. So, uh, let us talk about these um, Dirac monopoles. Okay. So, um, um, suppose there is a monopole that exists, okay. so it is like a, a point like magnetic charge and if uh, that would create a magnetic field. So, for a point magnetic field which is given by B equal to uh, let us call it a G to be the magnetic charge and uh, let us write down this as R by R cube which uh, would be represented by a potential which is given by this and uh, this is uh, as opposed to a vector potential this is a scalar potential which uh, depends upon the vector R uh, and uh, if we want to reduce the complexities then uh, these r can simply be uh, the vector r can simply be just r and not uh, a vector which means that it has no dependence on the angular variables theta and phi. Okay. So, uh, g is the magnetic charge. And uh, v would be simply equal to um, so, V of R will be equal to uh, G over R and then uh, so this is uh, you know because of this identity that uh, the Laplacian of 1 over R. So, if you take the Laplacian of that and this is equal to uh, minus 4 pi uh, delta cube R and this is a, a Dirac delta function in 3 dimension and uh, this is the Laplacian of 1 over R. This must be a known result uh, in electrodynamics. Uh, so, what it tells you is that uh, these if you take these things, um, if you take the, uh, the Laplacian that is del square and operate it on 1 over R, uh, it will give you uh, 0 contribution everywhere excepting at R equal to 0. Okay. So, that is why this uh, delta function comes and because we are talking about three dimensions uh, say spherical polar coordinates. So, it is a delta cube r. So, uh, then the magnetic analog of Gauss's law becomes equal to divergence of b is equal to a 4 pi uh, g uh, delta cube r. Okay. So, that is like the Gauss's law that we are aware of. Now, you know what happens when uh, you have a, a magnetic field to be present. Uh, the wave function of the particle uh, that evolves. Uh, so, usual uh, you know the wave function uh, sort of can be represented as uh, a if uh, p is a good quantum number or uh, k is a good quantum number it is represented by this, but in presence of a magnetic field. P is actually uh, P minus E A, okay, where A is the vector potential corresponding to the field. Now, in literature you might see a C uh, below which is actually in Gaussian unit we want to write down in the SI unit. So, now because of this uh, there is a phase difference 
if a particle you know uh, sort of goes from let me write it here itself if a particle uh, goes from point A to point B it picks up a phase Uh, which depends upon the upon the path. So remember, if there is no magnetic field, uh, then uh, these uh, phase that you see is not a path dependent phase. However, uh, this picks up a path dependence phase, and which this is called as a minimal coupling or the piles coupling, and this phase is given by E by H cross. Uh, and A to B, uh, A um, R dot D L, where D L is a vector that connects the point A to B. So, D L connects A to B, okay, this points, okay. Now, consider A closed loop C. Okay. So, we will write down uh, Gauss's law. So, the Gauss's law which we have written down just a while back. Uh, so, this Gauss's law will uh, give us a potential. Okay. This is uh, this is basically the flux of the electric field. So, E dot d s, E dot d s and this is over s and this is nothing but uh, let us just call it as uh, uh, because we are talking about electrons and uh, or the electric charge and this. Uh, so, let us write E over epsilon 0 and uh, similarly uh, for the Ampere's law. which will write it as phi b this is equal to s and b dot d uh, say for example uh, s again so that's this which is nothing but uh, if there is a monopole then this will be like g over mu 0 okay so um, s is any uh, surface which is uh, bounded uh, by this uh, by this c All right. So, as the uh, particle it is transported around this loop, uh, loop which is uh, this closed loop uh, C, um, then um, it, it will uh, sort of uh, uh, this magnetic flux say for example. So, particularly we are talking about this flux for a closed loop is nothing but it is like E over H cross uh, then it is uh, A R dot D L and uh, this is equal to E over H cross. We will apply Stokes theorem and Stokes theorem says that A dot D L or the line integral of any vector is equal to the uh, curl um, of that vector and the corresponding surface integral where the surface actually is just like this that uh, it is bounded by this uh, closed curve C. So, this is equal to um, a B dot D S. Uh, and this is nothing but a E by H cross and this is a phi which is a B. Okay. So, this is that uh, B dot D S which is what we have to find as the flux of the magnetic field. Okay. So, we are just assuming that uh, there is a magnetic monopole that exists and the uh, description of the electric field and the magnetic field uh, are uh, in the same footing and um, that is why we can write down this. Uh, so, now, talk about the wave function of the particle. So, the wave function needs to be single valued which means that uh, if you take the wave function uh, over a closed loop uh, then uh, there is no effective phase that it picks up. We are not talking about the dynamical phase. 
but over that uh, complete circle it will not uh, pick up any phase. So, uh, the delta phi uh, should be equal to some 2 pi into n where n is an integer. Okay? So, this tells you that uh, if the change in, uh, so this is the phase shift of the wave function. Okay, and then this is delta phi equal to 2 pi n. And now, that tells you that uh, the magnetic flux is quantized. Phi b must be quantized. So, that tells you your phi b is equal to uh, 2 pi h cross by e into n which is nothing but h over e into n okay and so h over e is nothing but um, you know that's the uh, flux uh, quantum so this is the flux quantum which is uh, very familiar and multiplied by n okay so the uh, magnetic flux will be some uh, integer times the flux quantum and uh, in fact, what Dirac showed uh, that this product of the electric charge and the magnetic charge, uh, so this product of electric and magnetic charges and said so this is equal to um, uh, h over 4 pi into n. And this is the main result that he said that uh, these charges are quantized. So, the existence of magnetic monopoles would explain the quantization of the electric charge. Okay? And um, uh, these integer n that you see is a topological quantum number. Okay. Uh, so, it counts uh, you know the number of uh, windings uh, around a singular point and um, the singular point is the uh, point at which the monopole resides. So, the monopole actually acts like a vertex and uh, you take uh, the wave function or uh, to take the particle around that and it just counts the number of times it uh, sort of winds. Okay. And uh, these are uh, also, you know, uh, can in a sort of tight binding model, we will uh, see how to calculate that and so on in order to calculate the topological quantum number or which is called as a topological invariant. Okay. So, uh, the next is um, Aronov Bohm effect, let us write uh, S2. So, before this um, effect was you know first proposed uh, as a thought experiment by Aronov and Bohm and, um, and then uh, you know it was uh, actually verified in experiment by Chambers in 1960. So, this was in 1959 uh, yeah so just about a year later it has been verified. So, the uh, burning question is that uh, we know about fields electric field and magnetic fields and um, the electric field corresponds to a potential such that E can be written as uh, you know minus grad phi and uh, for a static case the curl of the electric field is equal to 0 and um, just uh, uh, other way around uh, the B uh, has also a sort of uh, is represented by a vector potential and um, uh, this has uh, no scalar analog I mean in the sense that B is uh, obtained from a vector potential by taking the curl. So, B is equal to curl A and um, this is uh, uh, quite an important thing in the development of these uh, Maxwell's uh, relations and uh, I mean uh, equations say Maxwell's equations and how um, the wave propagation etcetera were uh, sort of you know uh, from these uh, written down from these Maxwell's uh, equations. However, it is um, uh, Aronov and Baum arg argued that um, it is not the fields 
that are most important. It's the potentials which are phi and A are uh, quite uh, important. In fact, they are more important than the fields. And um, in fact, uh, the uh, all the Maxwell's equations can be equivalently written down in terms of these uh, potentials instead of the fields which is more familiar to uh, anyone uh, you know working on this or studying physics. So, uh, in order to you know uh, sort of um, uh, pin down their views they as asked uh, to uh, consider a, so this is like a solenoid a very long solenoid and uh, so uh, to show that it is long that is it's like infinite this thing we are showing this and there are these um, this turn the wires are wound around the uh, solenoid and uh, why we have taken it to be very uh, large is or very long is that we want to eliminate the edge effects okay now inside the solenoid uh, suppose the current is i okay so current i uh, which is uh, going through the loops and which wound around the solenoid and um, this will produce a very constant or uniform magnetic field inside the solenoid okay and uh, this uh, magnetic field outside the solenoid is zero okay uh, and uh, that's why we have taken we have uh, neglected the edge effects and that's why we are talking about that we are you know uh, talking about a very large solenoid. So, uh, inside the magnetic field is uh, non-zero and uniform outside it is equal to 0. Okay? But uh, outside it is equal to 0 does not mean the vector potential is equal to 0. In fact, the vector potential exists such that the curl of the vector potential vanishes and we know that uh, when curl of a vector vanishes that means it is an irrotational vector which means that it does not rotate, it does not curl, uh, it is like a vector that is uh, you know either uh, increasing monotonically or decreasing and so on and so forth. Okay? So, uh, nevertheless I mean the whole uh, assumption is or rather the uh, these uh, the finding is that uh, the even though the magnetic field is uh, 0, the vector potential still exists and how would we know that the uh, the vector potential exists so uh, one can send one electron from uh, one side of the solenoid suppose you are uh, having this solenoid one can one electron can be sent from uh, the right of the solenoid and go and hit a screen at some distance away and another electron can be sent uh, from the left of the solenoid and would again go and um, incident on the screen uh, at a distance at a certain distance away. Now, uh, these two electrons uh, they also can be considered as waves and uh, these two waves uh, when the incident would have a different um, uh, phase okay? and uh, the it will have a constructive interference or a destructive interference depending on the phase relationship between the between the two electrons which goes uh, from the left and the right. And this um, phase difference can be uh, obtained or rather it is finite because uh, the uh, vector potential exists and this is equal to E over H cross and A R uh, dot D L where D L is the length that it travels and A is the vector potential that exists. And uh, this is uh, again by using nothing but the Stokes law we get it as uh, B dot D S. So, this is uh, you know that uh, that curve C and this is that S it is a B dot D S. Okay? Um, so, this is the thing and uh, one can actually uh, verify it in experiments which uh, Chambers did in 1960. Uh, now, this is a, a very important thing that uh, if this is a measurable quantity and this is actually verified in experiments which means that the potentials are more important quantities than just the fields and in fact, uh, this was uh, earlier not known. So, what is uh, important here is that uh, you know the, uh, the solenoid actually contains or the singularity in the vector potential is like a vortex as we have said. And uh, then uh, you can actually view the solenoid as a 
hole in the space which is uh, allowed uh, for these uh, vector potential. Okay. So, the quantization arises uh, from the fact that the, uh, the, the curves in the in the space of A, the vector potential uh, that enclose the solenoid are uh, non-contractible. Okay, so they, they cannot be contracted and so on. And uh, these, uh, the winding number uh, thus produced, which is a topological invariant, which is taking these uh, particle around the solenoid. Uh, these winding number characterizes, uh, you know, the distinct homotopy classes etc. So, what I wanted to uh, make sure is that uh, as soon as there are these uh, systems with singularities or vortices here uh, for example, this there is a vortex um, uh, which is coming from the, uh, the solenoid itself and the magnetic monopole is just like a vortex or a singularity uh, the, at, at its position. So, uh, there when you take a charge or take a particle uh, you know uh, around it, um, it will give rise to uh, quantized effects and this is uh, the topological quantization that one is talking about. So, this will not go away uh, uh, even if you know you can uh, adjust other quantities and this will still remain. So, aronoff bohm phase is an important, uh, uh, it is a sort of uh, uh, indication of topology playing a role in this uh, simple thought experiment. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, come to uh, physics and uh, let me you know show you I have already told you this that uh, this 2016 Nobel Prize uh, was awarded to uh, for the theoretical discoveries of topological phase transitions and topological phases of matter. Um, these are by uh, David Thaulis who won half the Nobel Prize and the other half went to uh, Duncan Holden and uh, Michael Costelis. Uh, I believe uh, David Thaulis and Michael Costelis, uh, they were awarded for the topological phase transitions, whereas uh, the topological phases of matter was due to Holden, uh, Duncan Holden, uh, which he showed uh, in the mid to late 80s uh, through a number of, uh, you know, uh, very well uh, cited publications. We will talk about uh, what is called as a Holden model etcetera. And um, this was in 2016 and uh, uh, after that uh, it was uh, these two gentlemen who had uh, popularized again uh, the, the concept of topology. It is not popularization, it is more like applicability and uh, into this quantum spin hall phase and they have written down a Hamiltonian which, uh, which does not have a quantum hall effect, but it has another um, a topological invariant called as a Z2 invariant and this is non-zero. They won a 2019 breakthrough prize in uh, fundamental physics uh, awarded to Charles Kane and Eugene Milley. Charles Kane is on your right and Eugene Milley on the left. Okay. Uh, let me uh, read out the citation, it is very interesting. Particularly, it is you know it predicts that there would be a lot of uh, applications of these uh, proposals uh, from Ken and Milley on uh, the quantum computation, quantum information etcetera and quantum technologies. So, the citation says that uh, for new ideas about topology and uh, symmetry in physics leading to the prediction of a new class of materials which are the quantum spin hall uh, materials that conduct electricity um, only on the surface and this electricity is actually the uh, the spin polarized current. Okay. So, the description is quite interesting, let me read it out for you. Uh, since the days of Ben Franklin, uh, we have come to distinguish between uh, electrical forms of matter that are either conducting or insulating. But that concept has been uh, turned inside out by Charles Kane and Jean Milley, who have predicted a new class of materials, uh, the topological insulators that are um, inviolable conductors of electricity on the boundary, but insulating or insulators in the interior. So, this very fact that uh, they behave differently uh, at the edges compared to the bulk. If you look at this uh, board that you are the screen that you see, if I uh, have these screen, uh, the edges of the screen that behave differently than the bulk, uh, I would not feel comfortable about it. Now, in fact, most of the uh, systems that we know they have no distinction 
between the behavior of the bulk and the edges. And um, this is what uh, precisely makes these uh, things so interesting. And so the discovery has important implications for the space race in quantum computing and could lead to new generations of electronic devices uh, that promise enormous energy efficiencies in computation. Topological insulators also offer a window into deep questions about the fundamental nature of matter and energy since they exhibit particle like excitations similar to the fundamental particles of physics, electrons and photons uh, such as them, uh, but can be controlled in the laboratories in a way that electron and photons cannot be done. Okay? These connections offer a new conceptual framework for controlling the flow of charge, light and even mechanical waves in various states of matter. This is what I was saying that topology has proliferated uh, uh, beyond uh, electromagnetic theory or optics or condensed matter physics. It has entered into acoustics, it has entered into mechanical uh, matters, uh, mechanical sort of um, materials uh, and uh, various other things. I mean unanticipated applications too seem inevitable when the uh, transistor was invented in 1947 and no one could uh, realistically predict that it would lead to information technologies that would allow terabytes of data to be crammed into a tiny silicon chip and that is what uh, all are there in, in our modern day computers and mobile phones and, and various other uh, gadgets that we see on everyday life. Uh, the last uh, part written in blue is actually uh, by Ed Witten who was the chair of the selection committee and he said that uh, Ken and Millie introduced new ideas of topology in quantum physics in a quite remarkable way. Uh, he is the chair of the selection committee, he says it is beautiful how this story has unfolded. Uh, we will uh, stop here today and we will carry on with uh, more discussions on topology and its relevance to um, condensed matter physics to be precise and we will see that uh, as a, as a uh, course you know unfolds. I am sure uh, you will learn a lot of things about uh, materials and in particular as I said that uh, quantum Hall effect is one such material which has um, been the first topological insulator. That means that uh, the bulk of the sample behave differently than the edges and uh, there will be more revelations of different kind of materials uh, you know which are either uh, dirty systems such as 2D electron gases or their uh, crystal lattices with uh, you know uh, proper symmetries and so on. We will stop here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.